10. Hey, hi guys, General Splatten here. Today we're going to be painting uh, Lich Lord Asphyxius from Privateer Press War Machine game. Um, I've already got him base coated. I figured we could skip that part of the tutorial. Alright, the colors are for the lower half, the cloak is P3's Crix Bane uh, base. The soul cages are blighted gold the chain is Vallejo model air gun uh, the arms and rib cage are Vallejo model air rust the pipes are Vallejo gun as well as the spear tips the uh, shaft of the spear is P3 Thamar Black. The armor is a mixture of Thamar Black and gun, model air gun. Then on the back, it's for the furnace is model air gun, and then Reaper um, Ancient Brass, I believe. So, that's it. Let's get started painting. Alright, I'm going in with Crixbane Highlight to highlight the Crixbane base. Just working up the folds of the cloak. Later I'm going to go in with Thamar Black and hit the deep recesses. <clears throat> And those are the only two colors I used, or three colors actually. Um, no added white or any kind of rucksack tan to the uh, highlight color. And it really does give it a good contrast if you saw the miniature in person. I'm sorry that the video is washed out, but it's just a function of my webcam. I'm trying to get a new camera. Just slowly work up the highlights with uh, successive layers and deepen the shadows of the recesses just to add volume to the uh, figure it's really a simple process since I'm only using these three colors but it does make a dramatic impact The mixture is one to one uh, or so. In this application, it, it works fine. Maybe a little thinner than that. They are the colors are close together, so you can get away with that at that ratio. Now I'm going in with the black, as you see there. <clears throat> I've painted his whatever this gold stuff is. It's uh, Glorious Gold by uh, Vallejo. Going in with Shining Gold and then finally the Vallejo uh, Model Air Gold, which is not really gold, but it makes a good gold highlight and also a good platinum highlight. Now I'm taking this Thamar Black, watered down somewhere 2 3 to 1 as a glaze and I'm going in and shadowing the metal on the spear tips. I'll also do that on the uh, other metal like the chain and the pipes underneath his arms. It, it's an easy effect to achieve and then and but it, it and it's not that time consuming but it adds a lot of drama to the part as you see there. Then you can go back in with a brighter metal and do the tips as I'll do later on. But just adding some definition and volume to the shadows and it 
really lends itself to making the piece pop. And I'm going in and doing the rest of the uh, metal, not his armor. His armor doesn't need any kind of shadowing. Uh, that's the reason I did that as, as it is. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. Now I'm going in and doing the brass and bronze pieces with the same Thamar black mixture, you know, watered down. Just adding shadows, defining the different areas. Like I say, it's a quick way to do it. And it works really well. Just glaze it on successive layers. Doing the piping as well. Now I'm doing the same shadowing the uh, sole cages. Now I have a wash, it's a homemade wash uh, with uh, black ink and uh, matte medium. Shadowing and washing the uh, arm areas and the cowl of his hood. <clears throat> now here's the part where we bring up the armor. I'm going back in with gun first, uh, watered down about two to one or so, and layering th that in over the darker metal. Also the same method for the uh, other metal and armor plates. You can really tell a difference uh, on the model itself. The, the armor started out you know, very close to black because that was the artwork from the book but it still you can still tell it's a shiny metal by the highlights that are p successively put on eventually it gets up to uh, silver I believe I used a reaper silver for this for the, the final highlights but you can see how it's coming up. Now I'm going in with uh, the Vallejo Model Air Gold. It makes a great highlight for uh, bronze or brass. Just give it that final pop. I didn't do it on the cow because it was a different color. It was the uh, rust. So I'll use some other colors on it. Now we're doing the uh, glow effects from the furnace and around the body. I'm using Worm Green by Privateer Press for this. And then eventually I'll highlight that up uh, with the Necrotite Green from P3. <coughs> Now we're doing the cowl. I'm using Brassy Brass, I believe, from Vallejo, and eventually go up to Polished uh, Brass, or Brassy Bronze, or whatever it is. But I'll go up to Polished Brass for the cowl, and also for the uh, arms and hands of the figure and the rib cage. <clears throat> And there's the final highlight as you see there. And you can see how it immediately starts to brighten up. Now we're doing the rib cage. It's still an important step even though I'm going to do glow effects over that or some OSL over it. I'm adding the necrotite green to the sole cages, just dropping them in the little dots that are in there. This is an 
exquisitely sculpted model, or at least cast model, I should say. Uh, it was the details were just so crisp and sharp on it. Going in and adding worm green here to the inside, doing the OSL around the rib cage. adding the OSL to the inside of the cowl like it's coming up through his neck or through the armor that's surrounding his neck doing a slight OSL around the sole cage itself and connecting areas highlighting the spear shaft with coal black it's a bluish black very very cool color uh, literally and figuratively. Uh, it's really just a wonderful color but it does give a, a, you know, it is a very cold color t as well. It looks more blue than it actually is there. I'm going back in and fixing the, the uh, transitions with a Thamar Black just while working them to, to get them evened out. <clears throat> the, the paint I used is, here was uh, I'd say a two to one mixture. I'm just using my ink wash, black ink wash again for the head. Then I'm going to go in with a little bit more of the wash in deep areas to really define those. Then I'm going to come back with like a Devlin mud or sepia wash. It's uh, just another homemade ink wash. Uh, just giving you an idea. And I'm hitting right in the uh, temple areas there to brown those up a little and feathering it out just to add interest as you see there just defines it makes it uh, better to look at going in now with uh, white Minoth white is what I used you can use any white really this thin down uh, two, 2 to 1, 3 to 1 in, on the top part because you want to blend it in closely but you can thicken it up for the bridge of the nose and eyes and tooth area. And that's what I'm doing now, highlighting that back up. Painting the runners or the holders for the is eye patch. Thamar black, gonna highlight it up with coal black. Just take your time, add several layers. It doesn't take long for this small an area. Going in now, doing the OSL off the light with worm green. Then I'll put a dot of um, the necrotite green in the middle of it for the glow effect. Or more intense glow and there it goes and there's his head attached <clears throat> now I'm going and I'm doing an OSL effect on his face where the light is coming up through his uh, neck area and shining on the lower part of his face not over the whole face airbrush time using worm green to do an OSL for the runes that I'll be painting on in a moment. Eventually that'll be highlighted in the very center with uh, necrotite green. Just take your time and use it very slowly. Some guys that are really really good with airbrush would do this a lot faster but I was just trying to be really careful. Didn't want to screw it up. 
then you're going to see me and screw up and fix it here in a second. I decided to leave that in to show you that if you got the model sealed and you work quickly enough, you can correct your mistakes. See, uh, boom. Get your tissue, cotton bud, makeup applicator, wipe it right off. Start again. Now I'm going in with the necrotite green right in the very center to function as an outline for the runes. And here we are painting the runes. I start off with the necrotite green and a little white. I'll do two passes for the runes. We're adding more white to it to get them to look like they're glowing. Don't be intimidated by painting runes or, or symbols like this because you think about it, you're used to writing anyway, so you're used to making letters. So you can do these. If, if I can do it, anyone can do it. You just basically, my method is I like to say I worry it into existence. I just keep plugging away at it and correcting and, and doing until it's where I want it to be. But you can do these. And now I'm going back in with the white mixture and brightening it up. Now I'm adding uh, PVA glue, you see there, and I'm going to use the uh, knock uh, leaf scatter, the yellow one, autumn, to put uh, on the peg because when I put this on the base, it's going to be floating above the plant life there and so I want to kind of blend it in the, the, the rod is painted a light green sort of like the foliage and then I add the foliage to it so it all blends together well that's basically it uh, if you have any questions or comments please let me know I'll be happy to help any way I can stay tuned for the uh, base tutorial that will be coming up later and also You've seen the uh, spell effect uh, video, but I think it uh, turned out pretty well. Well, this is General Splatten, and I'll talk again. Dismissed.